It's February 19th, 2018, and we're boondocking here at the Mojave Preserve. The gusts of wind last night were up to 50 miles per hour, and we had been through three other major windstorms with our trailer, and this was the best experience of all, and I think we've made some changes that might help some other people. Some of this may be old information for those of you who are more experienced a-liner owners or trailer owners. Please forgive the wind noise you may be hearing in this video. I've tried my best to to mask it. I'm standing here behind the trailer out of the wind. <laughs> There's the trailer. Um, it's still very windy here. Today it's supposed to be gusting. Right now it's around 30 degrees outside and the wind gusts are around 30 between 30 and 50 miles per hour here. Well, there's a huge cold front blowing all over the southwest right now. Tip number one, arriving at the campsite. We tried to arrive before the wind was forecast to become really bad. It was getting progressively worse as the afternoon wore on, so we skipped going to the Kelso Visitor Center this morning, and we tried to make it over here. It took us two hours from our previous campsite, driving on a bunch of dirt roads, but um, we were very happy that we that we did that because a couple hours after we arrived here, the wind really picked up. As you, some of you know, the A-Liner pop-up is a pop-up camper, which makes it really hard to, to get the camper raised if the wind is really, is really gusting. So what, I'm trying to use this Joshua tree to block the wind. I don't know if it's working. Here's our campsite. Tip number two. Try, the har try your hardest to orient your trailer into the wind, your car and your trailer. We hadn't done that before. We didn't know which direction the wind was blowing on these on our other windy campsites. Um, and we were really lucky that this one happened to be oriented um, facing, we could park the trailer facing into the wind which was blowing from the west. There's so many reasons why it's really great to have your trailer parked heading into the wind. One of the biggest ones is you open the door and the wind blows it shut for you instead of having the wind force it against the springs, possibly breaking, possibly breaking the hinge on the door. Same goes for the car doors. It's nice, even though sometimes they slam on us when we open the door, it, it, it doesn't hurt us. Another reason it's good to face your trailer into the wind is has to do with the way it's designed to be raised. So this is the A-Liner LXE. The two little roofs on either side are called dormers. And then the main roof, you, you raise the main roof first, which is, are the big A-frame sections. The front section is closest to the car. The back section is in the back. And the way it's designed, the front section has, at the very peak, there's a lip. And the, the bottom section slides up into that lip. So if the wind is blowing against the front section, the, if it happens to catch the back section, the back section will hopefully catch on that lip if it gets forced up by a violent gust and not keep going and blow off the trailer. Possibly if the trailer were parked in the other direction, the wind could catch the front roof, which would just keep on keep on blowing up in the air and blowing away. And another reason it's good to park with your nose into the wind is that there's less surface area for the wind to catch. Also, when we were setting up and taking down our trailer, we really tried to pay attention to the waves. The wind would come in huge gusts followed by not so huge gusts. So we would wait for the big gusts to come and then immediately after they were done, we would spring into action and try to either raise or lower the roof. Tip number three, try to find a campsite where there's a large boulder or hillside blocking the wind. This campsite has a few rocks. The tree doesn't provide that much shelter, but it's a little bit. Um, so we're fortunate, but actually the wind isn't really blowing straight across those rocks. So um, it may look like we're sheltered, but in reality it's not the most sheltered that you can find. Tip number four, leave your trailer connected to your car. That was a huge change for us over our last two windstorm experiences, and I think it made a huge difference. We didn't notice 
the trailer jumping around nearly as much. And that leads me to tip number five, which is make sure you put down all your stabilizers and then go around and check them periodically to see if things have loosened up. We did find one stabilizer that had significantly uh, moved, so it helps to stabilize everything. We also put down the tongue wheel in the front, even though it's not necessary since the trailer's connected to the car, but um, and it happened to be level uh, connected to the car, but it just adds extra stability and more points of contact with the ground. Tip number six, do something with these little black latches on the dormers if you happen to have dormers because they make a ton of noise. They they just go like this all night. <laughs> we are, we're using the blue tape. Again, that's one of my all-time favorite repair um, tools when we're on a trip like this. Tip number seven, solar panels. I have to report, I am totally amazed. Last night was the wind was incredibly violent and this solar panel was not, just, it was not missing in the morning. Could not believe it. Um, just put some rocks. We're using one of our stabilizers that was connected to the trailer um, as, a, as a paperweight. It makes a great paperweight. And it was still here in the morning. I, I'm, I don't understand why. <laughs> um, and then the Renogy panel we have, of course, it's really heavy, so it, it had no problems at all. Tip number eight has to do with noisy blowing wind gaps in the A-liner, especially for us in the dormers. We found that our dormers have, have significant air infiltration in mainly two spots on, on the sides, up, up on this, up along this edge. This edge has a nice rubber rubber weather stripping that's not, doesn't seem to be letting any air in. But over here, the whistling and the air just blow right in here, especially in that corner over there. So here's what I bought, air conditioning foam from Home Depot or on Amazon, and it it's really great. It recovers to its original shape really quickly. The, the big downside to this is, of course, it lets in some some air, but you don't hear the whistling. It, it blocks some of the air. My goal is to eventually find some sort of compressible foam that recovers, but also blocks all of the air. Still looking for that one. Tip number nine is something I feel very strongly about, which is when you buy your Alicor liner, get yourself the vacuum install by assist kit. I don't quite understand why it's listed as an option. Um, it should be just a standard equipment. I'm so concerned that so many campsites where there was wind, and it's been really helpful. It helps to raise the, the trailer roof, and it locks the two panels, the two roof panels together, so they can't separate. Here's the, the wind assist kit, locking pin connects up to the peak of the roof on the up, on the opposite roof panel. So this panel cannot separate from this panel. There's a hole, a hole drilled in the, in the tubing that the pin goes through. I thought I'd mention that even though other A-liner owners have reported on various websites and blogs that they've had issues with their A-walls uh, being forced in, in heavy winds, we had no issues last night with that. And it could be because our we have an, a newer A-liner, I'm not sure. Our plan is to keep a very close watch on the weather stripping that goes between the A-walls and the roof panels and make sure that whenever we put up, whenever we're putting up our A-walls, there is a compression fit um, with the latches and it's not just loose and flapping around. Um, there are small adjustments you can make with these, these corner latches, and they're not corners, <laughs> but you can tighten and loosen those. We've had to play around with that one because it's at a strange angle, um, but we had no issues last night with our, our walls vibrating or bouncing around or moving around. 
so tip number 10 might be a collection of, of things that you might think about doing if all else fails and it's it's such a bad storm that you can't you just can't operate it <laughs> in in your trailer because it's making so much noise and it's actually swinging around, vibrating, jumping up in the air. You're worried that it's going to blow over. Um, our one of our solutions has been, as I mentioned in another video, that we built. I built a sleeping platform in car inside of our Forerunner. You could make provisions inside of your car or truck for emergency sleeping in for cases like this. This is our our sleeping platform and there, even though there's a lot of stuff here right now we just plan to put it out on the ground or in the trailer in case there's a really bad windstorm and we're going to sleep in there on that. Or you could plan to leave the area and go to a hotel. <laughs> The problem with that is, I think for us, we would end up leaving the trailer here. There's no way we would even think about taking down the walls when the wind's that violent. It, it would just destroy the trailer, in my opinion. So, and a lot of times where we're camping, we're just too far away. It's, it's, it would be like a two hour drive to a hotel. So I think for us, the solution is to find a place to sleep in the car if, if things get really, really bad. Tip number 11 is, of course, don't leave home without a nice, warm windbreaker jacket, preferably a down jacket. Thanks for watching.